Okay, today's uh, meeting and teleconference between the Fish and Game Commission, the politicians that they had call in, and all the public is for today, April 15th, has concluded. And this is just a wrap up of what I heard and my viewpoints on some of the things I heard. I took quite a bit of notes here and I just wanted to give you all feedback since I know probably most of you, if not all of you haven't, did not hear the call. I wanted to give some feedback of what I, what I did here. And it's pretty interesting to see the different perspectives um, from both politicians and just basic citizens that were calling in. Um, this is just, it's a crazy situation guys. And it's very important that if you are a fisherman or outdoorsman at all, that you pay attention to this video and um, what's coming for tomorrow, because there's more of this tomorrow. And I would love for you guys to be involved in it. I know a lot of you guys are home anyway, and this is a great chance for you to be directly involved in your hobby, your lifestyle, whatever it is you consider fishing and, and outdoors activities to you. Um, but let's get to it. Um, I was involved in the whole call. Um, you had uh, Mr. Scalar, Eric Scalar, president, uh, heading up the call and uh, Vice President Murray and a few other people. Uh, initial, the initial part of the call was still a little bit of a disaster as they, they just, you know, it's funny, these politicians, they want us to trust them with something, these important decisions, but they couldn't even get this call situation sorted out. Last week, they had a disaster of a situation where the call was just totally out of control. And this week, there was really no difference at the beginning. It eventually got sorted out, but the initial call was a mess. And um, eventually, they got it where uh, politicians and and uh, whatever you want to call them, city leaders, first responders, whoever, you know, different sheriffs and such had the chance to call in. And one thing I noticed was right away is that many of the people that were calling in didn't, they didn't even have, like most of these people weren't even fishermen or somebody that would go fishing. I think only one or two out of maybe 30 or 40 callers they had actually said, yeah, like I go fishing, blah, blah, blah. Most of them don't. And, and so their weight to me doesn't carry, you know, it doesn't carry much weight to me of what they're saying. You know what I mean? Um, because there's no, um, there's no loss to them if they ban it, they don't care. You know, all they, all they care about is their own job. And, and they're basically, I got the vibe that a lot of them had talked pre previously before the call, because it was like, they all sounded like robots just reading off this script that they were handed like, yes, this is what I feel. And it was like all the exact same thing. Of course, you know, all these elected officials, um, and we'll get to these people later. There's like Inyo County Sheriff and, and Mono County and a lot of these leaders that are elected officials, by the way. So we'll visit that later. I think we should definitely, as a fishing community, um, look at the way they are deciding these things and maybe vote some of these people out of there uh, in the future. Unfortunately, it seems like this Eric Scalar, I already looked him up and this guy is just bulletproof. He's got, you know, three more years or two more years at the minimum uh, in his position. And I just don't really see how that, but I, I got to admit to you guys, I really wasn't aware of this commission, this fish and game commission at all. I thought it was just fish and game and and it turns out a lot of this stuff is written by this guy um, and his his people below him, all these people here. Um, these are the people that decide your rules and your whole life, guys, as far as fishing right there is this guy. And I looked this guy up, this Eric Scalar, and this guy just owns like a bunch of businesses, He's just a businessman. He's not even an outdoorsman. And uh, that's kind of telling on how this stuff is being handled anyway. But as the call went on, I noticed every politician is, of course, you know, on board. Go ahead and ban it. We support you. They were all just a big old circle jerk of people agreeing with each other. But then it, immediately um, I noticed what was interesting is that a few counties like Plumas County, El Dorado County, um, they supported um, remaining open. 
They did not want a closure. They wanted it to be known that they did not want to close. Um, both El Dorado and Pluma said that they just wanted local only like county residents. And while, and I'll address that now, do I agree with that? Not really, um, because it, it leaves the window for too much gray area. You're going to have a lot of problems with that. And uh, so I disagree with that entirely. Um, but I, you know, I thought it was just interesting that they wanted to remain open. Um, my thing about that, I, there was a few callers that were saying, some citizens that were saying, yeah, like, let's leave it open to, you know, uh, residents of those counties and stuff. But see, here's the thing. Uh, then what are you doing? I mean, it, it, basically the whole decision to ban it, to, to stop this fishing is to stop the fishing is you're trying to stop the spread. Well, if you're allowing people out there, then doesn't this kind of like ruin the whole point of this um, ban? So if you're going to ban it, ban it, you know, but there there are people trying to be like, yeah, well, we get to fish. There was even a few uh, politicians that were um, stating this like, well, uh, like one guy out of Bridgeport, he's like one of their um, uh, let me see if I can find his name in there. Um, I can't find it right now, but basically he's, he's, uh, like a, uh, basically controller up there in the Bridgeport area was like trying to chime in saying that, Hey, well, we can fish up here in Bridgeport. Like our locals, people that we live here can fish, but, but nobody else, like y'all stay home down there. We'll just have this fishing, um, to ourselves. And I just think that that attitude is absolutely is just asinine that they would even think that that should be allowed. If it's going to be banned, it needs to be banned for all citizens and not just, you know, let's just pick and choose, you know, because you live there that you should be allowed out there. That doesn't mean anything. My taxes, my license is paid for just like yours. And if I can't fish, then you can't fish. We're not going to, you know, the law shouldn't just be picking and choosing and who can do what based on where you live. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous, and I cannot believe the gall of these people to think that that's acceptable um, because it's definitely not acceptable. I, I just don't understand that mentality at all. And um, another another thing that I noticed was uh, cow trout. Now, cow trout, if you don't know, is supposed to be like a um, a conservation group, and over the years they have become just nothing but this like. Um, corporate sponsored group that of elitist people that basically uh, same thing like we can do this but you can't um, basically as long as you pay us our money um, you're good with us you know and they're just a ridiculous group I cannot stand Cal Trout but of course they jump on the bandwagon we support the ban really so Cal Trout out there just so you guys know Cal Trout supports banning fishing from from all you guys from fishing so uh be aware of who you guys give your money to uh cal trout ridiculous in that call i couldn't believe that um <clears throat> i noticed the guy that runs fred hall bart hall chimed in and uh, he supported the ban as well but he was trying to say that hey maybe we extend it after the fact like where it would have closed now we leave it open uh which is a fair that's fine I'm not, um, I'm not saying people can't support the ban or not, but I think it's kind of ridiculous that if you're pro fishing, then you need to be pro fishing. Um, this is not, you know, as I should stated earlier in this conversation right now is that I feel like this, this is a state level run thing. Um, fishing and other activities shouldn't be on the chopping block. I mean, here's an example of what I'm talking about. Now they might be banning, they're going to ban fishing. It's going to happen in the Eastern Sierra, but hiking, um, horseback riding and rock climbing, all that stuff is gonna remain open. So they can go do those activities, but I can't go fishing, you know? So how is that fair? And, you know, and the people that live in those counties, they can come down to where I live and buy groceries, visit family, do whatever they want, but I'm not going to be able to go up there to go fishing in their area because they're worried about spread. You see how ridiculous all this is? I think that they're definitely scapegoating the fishing scene 
uh, with this, like, like fishermen are going to be responsible for the spread. Look, folks, most of the stuff up there in Bishop in that area is closed anyway. There's no hotels. There's the, a lot of the restaurants are shut down. It's pretty much gasoline and a few grocery stores. And they're worried like that all these people are going to come up there. Now, as you know, by this channel, I've been fishing locally, you know, quite avidly for the last few months during this, um, during this whole pandemic thing. And Big Bear hasn't been that busy, guys. Big Bear is miles from millions of people. And I got to tell you, I mean, it, it, it's no busier than any other weekend up there. I haven't seen just floods and floods of people uh, showing up to fish it. It really hasn't been that bad. And there's been no problems with people getting out and separating. You know who I've seen doing the most um, non-social distancing is people walking. It's people that are walkers and just people visiting. Those are the ones that are not respecting it. Fishermen tend to stay away from each other anyway. So I, I didn't understand that. Um, you know, and as far as people like going to like, let's say Bishop, California, and they go up there to fish and they're like, oh, you're going to visit our grocery stores. Okay. But that stuff is open to anybody anyway. You know, if I was there for any reason, driving through town, I need groceries. Guess what? I can go in there and buy groceries. They're not checking my ID as I walk in the door and they couldn't do that anyway. So that's ridiculous to think that that's going to help stop the spread. Um, if it's open, it's deemed essential. And if it's deemed essential, then anybody can go in there. Um, so I, I just don't understand that. And here's the thing. If you want to cut it off, then cut it off. So no grocery trucks, nobody from down here in the South, as far as I know, Mammoth and Bishop, they don't have any warehouses or grocery warehouses. So, so where do you get your stuff from down here? where everybody else is and you got the same truck drivers and everybody coming from down here in busy warehouses and busy cities visiting your towns to drop off those groceries. The same thing with the fuel and everything else. So unless you're going to close your borders down at your county line, then I don't see how you can just nitpick and say that fishermen are somehow to blame for this spread and shut it down. I think that it's a big mistake. And one thing that I noticed in the calls that was interesting is that uh, Mr. Sklar is the, the one that was running the call. And when politicians were speaking, he gave them like carte blanche, speak as long as you want. But as soon as he got to the public content um, and comment section, he cut them off at one minute. Like, here you go. You got one minute. And, and I thought that was a little bit ridiculous. I don't think people were going to talk longer than that anyway. But I thought it was just kind of interesting that they limited the public but not the politicians. And then on top of that, during the time when the public, it was their time to speak, they were still taking calls from politicians. But when the politicians were speaking, if somebody from the public got in there, they weren't allowing the public to speak during those times. So it was, it was kind of unfair the way that the whole thing was handled a lot. There was a lot of bias to say the least in the way it was handled. And um, I really didn't think that that was a, it was a, a positive uh, vibe in that way. I thought it, it was definitely coming across, across very biased. And uh, I think that was definitely something anybody listening would have noticed. Um, another thing that I noticed is that the Fish and Game um, uh, director Bonham had chimed in. And, you know, it's funny because he's, he's trying to make it sound like at, at times he tried to make it sound like he's, you know, he knows that, you know, I'm an outdoorsman too. And, I understand and I, I support this and that, but see, this is what, and I, a couple of callers made that clear is that this is not a, you know, their job is to enforce the law. That's what fishing game does. They enforce the laws. They don't make the laws. So for him to chime in and, and try to say what he supports or not is, I think it's irrelevant. I don't think fishing game should have had a voice in this at all. I think they should have been completely cut off. Um, I don't understand why, you know, first responders are calling. Why? What does the sheriff have to do with this at all? They're only to enforce what is what is given as the law, like what is implemented. So it was just a very biased situation. And and let's face it, guys, they're they're going to do this. And um, but what what I think is interesting, and I'm going to show you guys something real quick. Um, let's get to this. I, this is very important. I want you guys to, to uh, see what I what I have going on here. Uh, 
let's see, California list of counties by size. Now they keep using, uh, in this, they keep using this word surgical that we're, we're implementing these laws surgically. Um, they're saying they're trying to make it sound by like that they're, um, this is not what I want, um, that they're trying to implement these laws surgically, meaning like we're, we're doing this so, um, you know, fine tuned that, um, why is that not, let me see if, uh, we can do it this way, list of counties by size, California. Let's see if that changes. I had a better list going. Um, I don't know where I found that. That's so weird. Um, oh, maybe the maybe this one will be good. But anyway, they're they're talking about it there. This is the website. So they were talking about doing this surgically, like somehow that this is we're just doing this. You know, it's just Inyo County. It's just Mono County. Like like that's just a small area. We'll get to how that that is a lie in and in of itself. But let's talk about that. Well, look at Inyo County, guys. Inyo County is the number two county in size in the state. 10 million square miles of fishing water, possibility of fishing water is going to be offline. And as we know in San Bernardino County, I mean, we are down to basically fishing like two or three spots in the whole county. And we're the largest, we're double that size at 20 million. And basically the only place right now you can fish is, is like Silverwood Lake and a few other spots. I mean, there's not very many spots to fish guys. So to say that they are being surgical when they're taking a, the number two County offline for fishing. And then Mono is no slouch. Mono, it ranks number 19. It's a pretty big County, 3 million square miles. But let's also look at this. How much of, of like, let's say like San Bernardino County, how many uh, available fishing waters are there compared to Mono? Mono has way more fishing than San Bernardino County does. San Bernardino County largely is in the desert. I mean, there's really nowhere to fish except for a few spots in the mountains, and you guys know that. Um, but let's let's get, you know, look at Mono. Mono has tons of lakes, lots of water. Grant Lake, for example, is huge. And there's not going to be massive crowds there, you know, hanging around on each other. It's going to be spread out. There's going to be plenty of room. So I just don't understand how they feel like it's being surgical when they're eliminating, you know, let's see, 10 million and then another three. So about, let's just call it 14 million square miles of land is going to be offline. That's just if those two counties are involved. There's also Alpine County, which is directly going to be involved right away. They're talking about Alpine, Inyo, and Mono County immediately being postponed. They're calling it postponement again. Um, it's a ban, guys. If you can't do it, it's a ban. So it's going to be a ban of fishing until May 31st. And What's interesting about that is they're trying to make that sound like, well, once May 31st comes, it'll just open. We all know that there's no cure, that that there's no changes here, guys. They're, they're talking about opening the economy up in many places because they realize that, hey, we're not going to stop this thing by just everybody staying home. It's not working. It's not going to work because people still have to go to grocery stores. They still have to do what they got to do. And it, all we're doing is destroying our economy. And yesterday on 414, Governor Newsom talked about that. He, he, so here we are talking about banning fishing um, and, you know, days, uh, you know, after they're talking about um, opening things back up. So it seems like we're kind of late in the game um, for opening up or for banning something when other areas of the state are going to be open. So you can go you know, eat at a restaurant in Los Angeles, but I can't go fish up in Grant Lake in the middle of nowhere by myself. That's going to be off limits. But if I want to go eat at a restaurant in the middle of Los Angeles, that's going to be acceptable. I just, I just don't understand why people are, are buying this guys. Like people are really supporting this and 
And it isn't just the politicians. It isn't just first responders. There are businesses and people that represent businesses in the Eastern Sierra and mainly like Mono County tourism. And if you go into their Instagram, like go on to Mono County tourism Instagram, and you'll see that they're trying to tell people to stay home, like stay home, don't come up here. But what do you see their pictures of? Let's do that. Let's go look. Let's go. Let's go check that out right now. I'm going to show you guys something. Let's do a Mono County tourism Instagram. And I'm going to show you guys something. This is going to blow your mind. So here they are, right? What do you see? They're out there posting these pictures. They're visiting these places. We're places that we're going to be banned from fishing. They're standing there. They're, here they are at, you know, I, I'm not going to log in on this right now, but uh, but you can see it. They're standing. There's, there's a picture of them at Convict Lake. There's a picture of them at Hot Creek. There's a picture. Watch down here. There's another one. Here's over here in Mammoth Lakes, you know. Um, some of these are old pictures, but some of them are new. Like, this is a brand new picture over there. It looks like Lee Vining Creek right there. Um, there's another one at, at Convict Lake. I mean, guys, they're not listening to what they're, you know, it's like, it's kind of like, it's good for you, just not for us. Like, we don't have to do abide by this stuff, but you do. So they can go out and they're freely, you know, walking around and doing this stuff. And, but other people cannot. You know what I'm saying? I want to show you guys a video. Um, let me see if I can get to this video. Um, it was on Conway Show Instagram. I want you guys to see this. This is the the uh, this is the hypocrisy um, that I'm seeing. Um, that I this is what I don't understand. Now I want you to remember, guys. They're banning fishing. They're going to make people stay like you cannot go fishing. This is yesterday. Um, let's just log in here real quick. Oh, goodness sakes. Yeah, it's not going to let me. But go to – I want you guys to go to uh, the Conway – go go to Conway show and watch the video of them at this, like, parade. Let me see if I can pull it up. There it is right there. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm, my fingers are like I'm at a weird angle here sitting on a couch. Um, I want you guys to see this video right here. Go to Conway Show and watch this video right here of this parade. You can see it in the picture right now. Look at all these people. These are hospital workers standing next to each other. Look how close they are. And these are cops. These same cops right here are – in, in two hours or probably in another area telling people uh, to get, a, you know, to stay apart, to stay six feet apart. And they've actually been ticketing and arresting people for that in the state now. And look at that. Look at that, guys. And just in that picture right there, what do you see? I mean, it's ridiculous. You guys need to watch this video on the on Conway Show's video. And you're going to, your mind is going to be blown. And, and remember when you're watching that video that, in the Eastern Sierra, they're, they're, they're saying that if I'm out there fishing at Convict Lake in the back there, that I am contributing to COVID-19 spread. Are you kidding me, guys? This is what's going on. And this is why I just don't understand why they're taking these standpoints and that they're doing this. So it was a ridiculous call, guys. There was a lot of great callers from around. Uh, pretty much 99% of fishermen that called in all supported keeping it open. Um, and a lot of them were stating, you know, constitution that, hey, you know, I have a, I have a right to, to go about, you know, and freely in this country, you can't stop me from that. And I agree. I, I'm a, I'm a constitutionalist and I, and I don't see the problem. I think they're discounting the fact that most fishermen understand we're not dumb people, you know what I mean? We're outdoorsy, but we're not stupid. And we're, we're, we're basically understand that, Hey, there's not going to be much open up there anyway. I'm not, if I were to go up there, I wouldn't be counting on staying in some hotel. Do I want to get sick sharing a hotel room with somebody that might have been sick before I got there? No, I, I certainly do not. 
I mean, at most it would be gasoline, but everybody's got to get gas anyway. So that's probably the, the limit of what I would do if I had to do it. Um, is that, uh, but outside of that, I'm, I'm camping, but here's the problem. They let, they shut down a lot of camping in not just, um, sanctioned campsites. They shut down, uh, BLM and dispersed camping up there. So like basically they took away the ability to be uh, social distance from people. They, they make it impossible. So it's kind of like they took away the ability of what would have allowed people to go up there to fishing. They took it away. And now they're like, well, see, we can't allow fishing because you got nowhere to stay. Well, they shouldn't have taken away the, the people's ability to do that. So there's just a lot of ridiculousness in this guys. There's a lot of like, fake agendas and one last thing i wanted to show you is in the call i noticed this was constantly repeated in the call they keep quoting the governor's um uh they keep quoting the governor's uh list of like what you can and can't do but i want you guys to see something here uh let's see <clears throat> we'll go to the california page for this and I want you guys to notice. So what can I do? What is open? So let's click on that. So um, actually, I think it's a little further down. Uh, yeah, outdoor recreation. So this is the California website, guys. And can I still go hiking or visit a state park? Now, I heard on this call, including by Mr. Sklar and Bonham, the Fish and Game Commission saying, well, hey, you know, and first responders kept calling and trying to quote the governor's order to stay home. There's a stay home order. There's a stay home order. You're not supposed to be up here anyway. Well, is that the case? Is that true? Because I'm reading something different right out of the government's website. So let's read about it. It says here, California's, uh, Californians can walk, run, and hike uh, in their local neighborhoods, right? But if you scroll down, what does it say here? Um, <clears throat> it says right here, uh, Everyone has the responsibility to flatten the curve by maintaining a social distance when recreating in the outdoors or staying home if they're sick. If visitors cannot maintain a social distance, they must need to leave the park. But it says, it, it never says that you, you aren't allowed. Show me where in this it says that you're not allowed to travel anywhere. Show me where. It doesn't say that you can't. It just says they're recommending that you know if you're going to be in your local neighborhoods um to stay social distance or wherever you go so it says uh if you go to avoiding crowded trails and parking lots to reduce cr uh, crowds the state parks is modifying operations including closing vehicular access so a state park isn't in most people's neighborhoods so you're allowed to go to state parks it's right there so I don't understand, like they keep quoting it like you can't leave. That's not true. That is absolutely not true. They can't stop people from traveling and they're making it seem like that is the case. Uh, it's not, it isn't the case. You are allowed to exercise. You are allowed to go wherever you need to go. They're just recommending that if it's not like, you know, don't go to like, uh, like a state park with a bunch of people and have a party. Don't go to, a trailhead and you know organize a group of 25 hikers and you're all standing around hugging each other you know whatever that means but that's all they're trying to say but you're allowed to be outside guys they've never said that you guys aren't allowed to be outside or go out into the you know uh outdoors in fact it says right here maintain social distance of six feet or more when recreating outdoors so you can go outdoors you can travel, but I think that what they're saying is when you do, you need to be responsible and follow those rules. Stay six feet apart. Don't be in groups of more than 10, et cetera, et cetera. So the calls are, we're getting railroaded folks. I'm just telling you right now that they're going to do this. They're going to ban it. And then, you know, and here's my concern is, you know, fine. Let's say, let's, let's just be, you know, devil's advocate here. Let's agree with them. Let's say that we agree they should close it down. You know, Oh, it'll just be till May 31st. Like they said, but what happens guys, what happens at May 31st when they say, Nope, we're not going to open it up yet. And it's still closed. 
and then we're going to go another length of time and then another length of time. At what point is it going to be acceptable? I mean, at some point, it's going to be a problem. And here's my prediction is that after so long, these businesses and people like in Bishop, I can tell you firsthand, I've been going to Bishop for a long, long time, more than 30 years. And I can tell you Bishop is going to suffer from this closure because that city is like, you know, they don't call it fishmas for nothing. That's because Bishop makes most of their money from that fishing season. That's when they make their money. And it's closed in a lot of people that live there and work there are going to be moving. They're going to be moving. They're not going to be able to stay there. So you have all these people that are rich or politicians that get paid anyway are all for this. They're like, yeah, yeah, let's close it. But you know what? The thousands of people that live there that, that want to stay there are not going to get to stay. They're going to be evacuating those cities when the money dries out. They just got their little checks. Everybody just got their little you know, stimulus check. But guess what? In another three months, unemployment is going to end. It's going to end. And what happens after that is when they, all this stuff is still closed, because I think it's going to stay closed. I don't see why they're, they're going to be like, oh, well, you know, we, you know, with no vaccine, suddenly they're not going to be like in a few months, they're not going to say, oh, hey, let's just open it back up. There's no vaccine and the virus is still spreading. But, you know, we did our little closure, so let's open it. That's not going to happen. They're going to keep it closed, guys. Don't think that they're just going to open it back up after May 31st. They're not. They're going to keep it closed. And by closing it in the beginning, it's just going to make it easier for them to keep it closed because all they got to do is just say, oh, we're continuing it, you know. So but I just want you guys to know what's going on. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of there's very little side of me that wants the closure. I mean, I understand that they are thinking now. Here's here's the bottom line. I understand what they're thinking. They're thinking that these 1990s crowds of people going up to the opener, those days where you saw 20,000 boats out there on Crowley, that, that's what you're going to see on this fishing opener, guys. I think that's what they really think. And I'm telling you, I've been going to openers for many, many years, and I've seen it fall off every year. And it is nowhere near as crowded as it used to be. And that was without this going on. That was when people had money. That's when people had jobs. That's when people didn't have other things going on. And right now, people are broke. People are absolutely broke. There's a lot of people out of work. Do you really think that people in droves are going to pack their cars up and drive up there and spend what little money they have left on fishing up there? I just don't think so. Like I said, Big Bear is right up the street from millions of people, and it's not crowded. And there are fish to be caught there. So why do they think that this is going to be some huge wave of people going up there? It's just, it's stupid to me. And, um, but I really think that those cities up there are going to pay the price. I think Mammoth is going to be okay because they got ski season and all that. And I think a lot of money is just going to, going to, you know, support that town anyway. But I think Bishop is going to pay. I think the smaller towns up there are really going to pay. And I think the next time it's open, if you guys decide to go up there, um, I think you're going to see a lot of stuff shut down after COVID-19 is over. I think you're going to see a lot of stuff just gone. And I think it's going to hurt the fishery because a lot of the uh, hatchery fish are not going to be planted. The, there's going to be um, a lot of effects of this, guys, that are just not foreseen by, by this. I think that they should have been more wanting to keep things open and functioning and, and limp this thing along until it's over. Instead, they're just going to go for this whole shutdown, um, cancel culture thing. And I think it's going to uh, backfire big time. And I think a lot of the people in those um, uh, communities up there are going to regret supporting this closure because I think they have no intention on reopening it. I don't know why they think this is such a positive step to take but fishermen and that and that whole uh, community is is taking a like man they are just like literally blaming us for the spread like like fishermen and outdoorsmen are the pure reason why this is spreading and it's kind of ridiculous because as you know guys we're mostly like we want to be by ourselves anyway we don't want to hang out with people but why don't they talk about Walmart and and other places where people are still going and buying ridiculous things that they don't need over there 
hoarding DVDs right now because it's on sale, but I can't go fishing. I think that's ridiculous, guys. So tomorrow there's another meeting, and I think that's when after that meeting they're going to make their decisions. Um, make sure you guys listen. I mean, it, it's the future of this this whole thing is is going to happen tomorrow. This is the end of it. Um, I want you guys to be involved in it. Uh, let's get to the teleconference right here. So yeah, I mean, they're going to update the website, I'm sure, because the 15th already happened. But here's the uh, information right here. Um, take a picture with your phone, do whatever you want to do. This is for tomorrow's meeting right here, the dial in and um, access code right here. And get involved, guys. I will be on that call tomorrow. It starts at 9 a.m., very important. Today's call was at 10 a.m. Tomorrow's at 9 a.m. And um, it's going to be interesting. They will be allowing public comment again. So uh, be ready to be involved in that, guys. I think it, it's just important for you guys to hear because what you're really hearing is it's like a portal into the politician's mind and how they view uh, the sport of fishing and how unvaluable this is to them. They just don't care. As long as they have their jobs, they're cool with it. They don't mind shutting down your life, your ability to get outside. I mean, folks, we're all cooped up. I mean, we're all sitting at home and, you know, this is one of those few things that we, we could look forward to, like getting out in the middle of nowhere, casting a line, reeling in a fish, enjoying that little bit of family time in a rural area is, is great. And, I, and I'm, it's going to be really sad when that's not possible. And, um, and lastly is pay attention to this whole lie that they're, um, when you hear it tomorrow, that this is just the Eastern Sierra. This is just Alpine, Inyo, and Mono County. But remember, this situation is open to any county that wants to be involved. So what, and I already saw that um, Trinity County, um, Trinity County, and I think there was one other one up there, but there's already counties uh, making it known that they want in. So who's to say that San Bernardino County doesn't say, uh, yeah, we want in, close Big Bear. We want in, close, you know, Castaic Lake or whatever. They're going to do this, guys. I, I want you guys to understand that you're going to see while they're saying, oh, it's not a complete shutdown, it's going to be a complete shutdown, fellas. It's going to be. So make it known, make your voice known, get on those calls and uh, give your opinion. Don't be afraid. Chime in. They're going to give you one minute. I recommend that you write down some notes and stick to it. I tried to do that and I just, I just can't, I couldn't help myself. I just wanted to talk for like three hours on that call and just yell at these people, but make sure you give yourself that minute. Make it count, guys. I hope to hear you on the call. Make sure you represent uh, where you're from and uh, let your voices be heard. There it is right there, guys. All right, I'm going to get on out of here and uh, kind of hobble around and try to do something. Uh, as you know, I'm still dealing with this broken leg, and I probably got another three weeks to a month before I'm enjoying the outdoors myself. And uh, so hopefully that will come sooner than later. Anyway, uh, good to – Good to hear from you guys in the comments section. Post up what you think. If you have any questions about this or any other video, uh, you know where to find me. Thanks for watching.